He gets the ball, drops straight back with time, throws over the middle, caught by Ajala. He's got some room across the 50, 45-40, and finally brought down at the 35-yard line from the gun. He'll drop straight back, has plenty of time, looking around, throws to the middle, caught. Here goes to Bucky Jones across the 40, and that's a major pickup for Tabucky as he's got plenty for a first down on the Rhode Island 34-yard line. Niebuhr going to shotgun set. He's got Edmonds with him. Play fake. Niebuhr drops back, looking deep, tosses over the middle, caught by Wetzel. Breaks the tackle to 20, and he's nudged out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Now Edmonds will get it up the middle, bursts through the hole at the 5, trying to get forward. He dives in, and he's in for the score. Chase Edmonds from 16 yards out. Dropping straight back, looking deep down the field. He's got Ajala, and he makes the catch down the sideline at the 25. Breaks the tackle and loses the football, but he was initially ruled down at the 10. It's going to be a handoff. Edmonds up the gut. He walks in for the touchdown. Second score of the day for Chase Edmonds. 13-0 Fordham with the extra point upcoming. Play fake looking up top to the end zone, and it's intercepted. Fordham makes the play, Ian Williams in the back of the end zone. And Fordham is getting the football back. Bounce. Second and five, it's gonna be a handoff. Edmonds left side has a huge hole. Edmonds is loose across the 40 to the 50. He's gonna go all the way to the 30, to the 20, 10. Goodbye, Chase Edmonds, touchdown Fordham. Backs with Lowry in a shotgun. High snap, it goes over his head. Ball rolling at the goal line, it's still loose. A fight for the loose ball, and this is a touchdown for Fordham. Fordham comes away with the football, and the Rams of the Bronx extend the lead. And this goes over his head, all the way into the end zone. Caparello's going to take it. Williams drives him down, and this will be a safety. Fordham already leading 33 to nothing. Edmonds left side, spins away from one man, still has it, breaks free into the open, down the left side, goodbye Chase Edmonds, touchdown number four, Fordham up 39-0, sends this one off, an end over end kick, it will be taken by McCombs at the 10, across the 15 to the 20, has a hold of the 25, and up ended on a great play from Marcus Fulmore to make the tackle in open space. 9.06 to play third quarter. Stands in the shotgun with a couple wide receivers to each side. Play fake. Niebrick, plenty of time. Going up top. It's to Bucky Jones. He makes the catch, and he's in for the touchdown. 32 yards for the score, and Fordham is up 46 to nothing on a pitch and catch from Niebrick and Jones. The transfer from Boston College gets the snap. Quick throw out to the left for Dre White, and Lorenzo Smith sticks him in the backfield. With the ball on the 39-yard line. Play fake, Mazzle steps up, has a lot of time, deep down the field. Patronelli makes the catch, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. How do you like that? The Fordham backups getting involved, and the Rams extend the lead. Fordham all over Rhode Island. There's the exclamation point on homecoming. 44-yard line. Lowry in the gun. And McCombs gets the handoff. Ball is loose, and this one's scooped up by Fordham. Andrew Ehrenberg picks it up, and the Rams of the Bronx have dominated every facet of this game. Another turnover for Rhodey. Fordham University gets the ball back. Down in 12, ball in Rhodey's 26. This is going to be Glogau, keeping him himself. Up the middle, scampering ahead, and he may have enough for a first down on what will be the final play, potentially. Six seconds remain, and the clock will run out. That will do it here in the Bronx. Fordham University proves where the best Rams reside in the FCS. Fordham wins the Battle of the Rams. Final score, Fordham 54 and Rhode Island 7. Good bounce back win for you guys after last week? Yeah, I think um, obviously you got off the tracks a little bit last week and it was certainly a performance. It was uh, unacceptable on every level. And, uh, you know, it starts with me. Carries down to the kids, and you know we we challenged them to you know hang their hat on the things that's made us very successful here in two plus years, and, and that's you know, our preparation during the week and having a great practice week, uh, and understanding the little things play a part, in it. and that gives you the opportunity to come out on game day and give great effort and execute your scheme, and uh, they did. The kids did a great job, and it started Saturday night. Uh, you know, came out Sunday, and we were firing on all pistons, and it wasn't clean necessarily. Um, 
by any stretch of imagination, but they gave great effort during the week of practice, and we earned the right to come out here and have a chance to win. So that's the thing I was most pleased with. We, we, we hit a little bit of adversity, and we fell back on our foundation and our habits, and uh, it was a great bounce back win. Is there anything you saw this week in practice that convinced you that we're over to Villanova again, just looking ahead to this week and beyond? Uh, not necessarily anything different. Uh, I saw the team that, that, that I'm used to seeing <laughs> uh, on a weekly basis. And not, we didn't, and to be quite frank, there wasn't a discussion of what it was going to be during the week. It was more of a directive that you know we're going to get back <laughs> and do the things that are necessary for us to earn the right to win football games. And it was incumbent upon the leadership and the seniors and the guys who played prominent roles on this team to make sure that it got done. Uh, and they did. So, uh, you know, obviously, that's the standard. Uh, that's the expectation level. Uh, you know, we, we certainly wasn't perfect today. It wasn't clean. It's never going to be. But, you know, that, that, that's, that's the team that I know and that I recognize. And I could have been more proud of guys today. Chase, um, is there something different about playing at home? Uh, well, you know, this team always says that, uh, you know, we never lose a home and we never will, I believe. If we just keep doing the little things right. But at home, you know, you have the fans behind you. You just have great momentum. And uh, you just keep that to use for your advantage, I guess. Mike, after that first game, you came in and talked about wanting to be better. You know what happened last week. How do you think uh, you played out there today? I think it's a work in progress, though. Um, obviously, you know, there's some stuff going on, but uh, I still need to be better. Um, you know, obviously that, that second interception was just a careless throw up that, that I just tried to squeeze in. So um, I thought, you know, I, I threw the ball much better today, more accurate, um, but you know, there's always there's always room for improvement, even, you know, from last year. So um, it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. Uh, Coach, you, you haven't lost much the past couple of years, but when you have, you guys have bounced back 6-0 after uh, losses not including season-ending losses. Um, do you attribute that to some of the things you talked about earlier, just the fact that you come in the next day and you're ready to go? Yeah, I didn't actually know that until um, DJ Sixsmith from FUB mentioned in the pregame interview, but uh, you know, that's a very good thing. I think the thing that you know, I hope the players you know, appreciate from the coaching staff is, is the level of consistency. Uh, we come in, and whether it's a win or a loss, you know, our Sunday meeting is the same. We address the things that happened in the game, whether they were good or bad talk about the things that we need to do to either continue doing the good things or correct the bad things. So it's, you know, we don't come in, we don't yell and scream. Uh, we may raise our voice a little bit about some of the negative things, but, you know, the recipe doesn't change. Uh, you just got to make sure that, uh, you know, you're consistent with what you do. And uh, I think that's attributable to these, a great tribute to these kids that, you know, when adversity has hit, you know, in the past couple of years, they find a way to dig down and fall back on the things that made it successful and, you know, get, get pointed back in the right direction. Ian, the defense was uh, very, very different today. What was kind of your mindset going in and uh, looking for a win against Rhode Island? Uh, mindset's the same. Uh, we, we always just want to like play the best we can, even individually and as a defense. And uh, I don't know, it was a blessing how, we, how, how well we did out there, and we just got to keep it up. When you look at uh, Ian's scoreboard after a game like this, you see how many points are on there. There, there were defensive plays that you guys made that obviously added to that and uh, you guys did a nice job overall. How do you think on an individual level you made some big plays but just overall the defense as a unit today? The defense did great today. We got to keep it up. We got to continue to work. And, I mean the sky's the limit for the defense as long as we keep keep working as hard as we can. I, I know our defense had to sit you know what I mean? And you saw it for you know three plus quarters against St. Francis and you know, obviously you know, nobody played well in the Villanova game, but uh, you know, I, I like our guys on the defensive side of the ball. I think I think Coach Woolley and Coach Carey and those guys do a great job putting them in a position to be successful. And uh, I think the thing that did, you know allowed them to do the things they did today is we. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cliche. We had a great week of practice. I mean, we were flying around, we were fitting the runs up, we were knocking them back, we were contesting passes, and there was a great energy and a great enthusiasm, and it manifested itself on the field. So, you know, you're. You truly are going to, going to play how you practice for the most part. And, uh, the defense, they, they were, I mean, their energy level throughout the week was, was fantastic. Uh, and you could tell that they um, that they wanted to make a point today and make a statement. And I think uh, you know, it, it was definitely a step in the right direction. Concern at all about the uh, penalties? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, you're always concerned about penalties. Uh, and, we, and we've been a very highly penalized team here uh, in our time. And, you, know, you just got to work and minimize it. You know? there, there's ones that are going to occur during the course of the game, and I've said this uh, before, that, that are, you know, pre-snap penalties. Thing, uh, there's errors of omission. There's errors of commission. The, the things that are stupid and, and we can avoid, you know, those are the ones you want to knock out. There's going to be things that happen. No, no game's going to be penalty-free. Uh, but the ones that, are, that I call stupid and, and things that you can avoid that, that aren't smart football, those are the ones that, that you know are, are unacceptable. There's some things that are going to happen during the course of a game that yeah, you have to get sorted out. But certainly, uh, 14 is 14 too many. Is there anything that you and anybody can respond to this that you guys, as you get closer and closer to the Patriot League schedule, I understand you go week by week, but anything as the competition gets tough here that you need to improve on as a team. Our sense of urgency. That's one thing I noticed at practice. You know, Michael did a great job this week leading the team at keeping us urgent. That was a problem of, I believe, last week. You know, we got to just stay on track, stay focused, and just keep pushing every practice every day. Yeah, I mean, he makes a good point. We just got to, you know, we got back to, like Coach Moore said, we got back to the little things this week. And, um, you know, urgency was a big thing, and, and I think we kind of fell away from that the first couple weeks of the year. Um, so, you know, obviously after that, that loss to Villanova, we kind of, you know, uh, the eyes started to widen up a little bit and we had to get back to the little things. So as long as we keep, you know, keep moving forward, keep doing the little things right, I think, you know, as the Patriot League season comes, obviously each game is going to be tough. Um, so, you know, we just got to keep moving forward, keep, keep progressing. Nobody, nobody enjoys losing. But do you think a loss, even a bad one, could be beneficial over the long term of the season? Because it sort of wakes you up to... Yeah, needs. absolutely. Um, I think that's exactly what it did for us. Uh, you know, I think we, we started to, you know, like I just said, we, we started to lose track of the little things. We started to lose track of, of how we got to where we were last year. And, um, you know, that loss to Villanova, we, we all just played terrible. And it's because we started losing sight of, of what got us to where we were. Um, and I think that we, we got back to that this week, and obviously you, you, know, you see the outcome when we do all those little things right. So, um, you know, we just got to keep moving forward, keep grinding through things, and, and getting better, and you know, we're going to be all right. That was a point, point made very early in the week, and I'm paraphrasing this quote, is that prosperity is great, but um, adversity helps you appreciate what is right. And, uh, and that was the message to the guys, that we lost track of the things that are right. And I, and I, I guess I paraphrase that, but... You know, that was, that was a big thing this week, it, you know, and I, myself included. And, I, and, and the reason I say that is because obviously I wasn't do, doing a good enough job policing it and emphasizing it. You think you are, but uh, the lesson that we learned was a tough one. And you warn, you warn, you warn, and sometimes experience is life's best teacher. And, uh, and knowing in that locker room, that was, that was brutal. And no one wanted to experience that again. And, uh, you know, we did. We got back to doing a little things. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks. 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 Thanks.